The thing is that I am obsessed. As a writer, I am obsessed by the structure. Because I'm a, I am a quiet, I'm quiet like crazy in my head. So to write, it is important to fix a strict a structure like a skeleton to be able to go further in ex, in the exploration of your of your subject and and your own craziness of this on on this subject. And um, I, I had two choices while writing. The first choice is what I, I call the Senegalese choice is to speak, to speak, blah, 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 blah. And uh, with great, great French, with great turner of, of, of sentences, something like very emphatic, something like that. And I had the Congolese way, which is to speak with, with shortly and very with a great impact. So I chose the middle way <laughs> because I, it, it, for me it, it was it was very hard, but I chose the middle way to incorporate the both, you know, the both while telling a great story in in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a certain way and the short story and mix up with, with you know with this logic to life is something in your head short and something what you live in a long flow something i i, I hope i hope i uh, i am understood i i can be understood well, like most people of my generation i fell into literary translation by accident um I didn't know what qualifications you needed or how people came, went about becoming literary translators. And in fact, there wasn't a way. There was, there were no courses in translation at the time. There were no university degrees in translation at the time. Um, in fact, basically, I became a translator because I have never willingly turned down the opportunity to do something that might be fun. Um, so I had ended up translating uh, initially for myself literally I was just saying to 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 ghost that um, I translated an entire novel just so my friends could read it because it was one of the oh, best novels I'd ever read so gradually as I got to know some publishers I did some uh, I worked was working in in comics in what were eventually called graphic novels at the time I translated some of those I got to know some editors and one day somebody um, said okay well do you want to try doing a sample for this book so i did whatever you know the first three four thousand words and based on that they decided they would allow me to translate it my actual big break beyond that was the fact that the second novel that i translated um was hugely successful i mean it went on to sell almost a million copies in in the united kingdom this did not make me famous but basically, what happened after that is if somebody was looking for a French translator and couldn't think of one, they'd go, oh, why don't we get the guy who did uh, that book that was really successful? So, yeah, that was my big break. Again, it's all accident. <laughs> what I miss the most of that time I wrote this book nine years ago, let me tell you... I missed my notes, you know. I, <laughs> I, I have I have taken some notes uh, before writing this book. I I I, I take do, those notes while being a guard, a security guard in Sephora or in Camaleo in Bastille. So I missed my notes. They they they, they were very funny. <laughs> they were and and there is a lot of notes. I, had, I didn't put in the book, but when I remember the time I was writing and re reading these notes were very graceful moment because it was, I was far from France because I write, I, I have written this book in Cote d'Ivoire in in, in in at 600 kilometers from Abidjan in a city called Fekesedougou. And I was far from everybody, far from I have the distance, this geographic, geographical distance from Paris and the political distance. 
and I feel like free, you know, to, to write everything. And I wrote this book, I think in, in two weeks. And that was, c'était un moment de grâce. Well, that's scary. I mean, if you wanted a 5,000 word thesis, you should have asked us in advance. Um, I think actually, while there are similarities, certainly with a translator, there is the sense of being an observer. Um, uh, and there is, one is encouraged, or certainly one used to be encouraged to be as invisible as possible. Um, I'm not sure that the, that the idea holds up because both author and translator are forced to create or forced to do what a security guard hopes is that he will never have to do anything at all. I mean, that's why he is standing heavy because he is hoping that just by standing there, that accomplishes everything that he does. Uh, whereas goes, you can say, I mean, Yes, you stood there, but you observed, and from that, you create. And, and, ouais, tout à fait. And it's important. One of the first things you, you do when you are observing is not be seeing. You know, mm. you observe, the, 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 the most you are invisible, the most you are fine with, with observing people, you know, observing situations. And and in in some in somehow, the translator have have this this uh, this role kind of kind of role, and and uh, at the end of the ad, uh, of the translation, it is on only at the end of the translation you 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 remember that oh, there were a translator, you know there were a security guard there, and that is the beauty of the thing you know. Yes, it's certainly the first thing that a translator needs to learn to do, which uh, an author also must do, and which a security guard must do, is you learn to park your ego. Um, your ego is of no help to you in trying to translate a book. Um, and your ego, I'm, I'm assuming, I have not been a security guard, um, um, <laughs> that your ego would not be very useful. Um, what you're really hoping is that your mere presence the fact that you are watching constantly, the fact that you are there, does your work for you. At the beginning, you're, the, you're a kind of god, you know. You, you will do that, you will do that, we will go there, we will go there. Nah. And after a few pages, you, 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 you become the, the slave of your, your creatures and your story and the way you want to tell the story. And that's, and that's the moment you have to park your ego, as Frank said. Yeah, humor is humor for for me, for me, and I think for most of the humans on the earth, humor is an expression of intelligence. You know, the man who laughs, the woman who laughs, is the woman who have understood. You know, the man who have understood. You know, and for, for me, laughing open your 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 minds to put. To, to let come intellig intelligence. And I think it I think our parents who were laughing every time have understood that before us. And uh, this society is too serious. And that's why the things are, are are going so wrong most of the time. Because ev people think that they are very serious. But this is not serious to have a king. Or it is as as it is not serious to have uh, you know with <laughs> to to have a like a, a president you know, the, a man who, who, who leads, that is not too, the, the deal is not too serious, you know. It is like a game, you know. Uh, National Assembly, uh, the, 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 it is a game, you know, like in the, like in the school, in the schoolyard, you know. But they have guns, they have power, the, the, something like that. It is, it, it is time to, to bring back them on earth by make people laugh to to express the, the to express their intelligence on the situation of the world you know
I think you cannot translate something unless you completely immerse yourself in it um, in the same way that you could not perform a play or a piece of music uh, without doing that. Um, usefully for me, this is not the first novel of the African diaspora I've translated, nor even the first novel from Côte d'Ivoire that I've translated. That said, you know, uh, my command of Yoruba or Malinke or um, a variety of other languages is extraordinarily small. I listened to an awful lot of uh, uh, West African music. I uh, immersed myself. I, I, I did a, an awful lot of research, but then you do, you end up doing an awful lot of research on anything that you do. Um, at, at some level, all translation requires you to appropriate a culture. You can only do that if you immerse yourself in that culture and try and, and know as much about it as it is possible to, to know. So understand its humor, understand the rhythms of its of its spoken language, understand um, what is funny there and why it is funny there, but also understand the um, its culture and to some extent um, its history so that you are not simply taking words and making other words out of them. You are taking something that makes complete sense to you and recreating it as best you can.